Hi, we're with Vogue, filming 73 questions with Judy Bueno Anya. Let's get started! Hello? Hey Judy, we're here with Vogue, filming 73 questions. Mind if we come in? Oh, sure. Great, thanks. So Judy, what were you doing before we came in? Oh, I was just uh, looking at you guys through the window. Nothing too serious. Oh, okay. Can you please describe your childhood? Oh, uh, sure. My childhood was quite traumatic. My mother died when I was at the ripe age of four, and then me and my brother moved in with my grandpa. After that, my father got remarried, so we moved in with him and his two new sons. Um, but there, he treated me like a slave and starved me. Looking back, are there any specific events that you can remember that may have contributed to you committing any crimes? Well, I attempted murder on my father and his wife and his two sons because of the way he treated me. Um, so, I guess you could say, yeah. Did you have any early indicators of a murderer? Well, that's similar to the last question, but yeah, because I was put in jail at 14. Let's go up there. Yeah, sounds good. So, what are your biggest fears? Um, well, court believing that I'm not innocent. Where's your favorite place to be then? Um, I like Panama City Beach. It's really calm there. Yeah, I love that beach. Mm -hmm. And where are you taking us to now? We're going to my bedroom, of course. Oh, nice. Your house is pretty. Thank you. Yeah, of course. All right, here we are. So, what's your wake-up ritual? Well, first I get up. I pray, of course. Then I pick out an outfit and do my skincare as usual. Then I'm ready for my day. Nice. So, what's the highest level of education that you received? Well, I went to an all-girls reform school. That was pretty much it. Did you graduate high school? Uh, yeah, I graduated the reform school. Did you go to college? No. Why would I want to do that? Okay. Do you have a favorite time of day? Uh, yeah. I like 4.32 in the morning. That's when my alarm goes off to wake me up. 4.32 in the morning is when you wake up? Yeah. That's not weird. And I also like 10.45 on Sundays because that's when I go to church. What's your favorite animal? Oh, I like rabbits. Because I had a rabbit when I was seven, and her name was Susie. Is that what this is? No, that's my dog's bed, but he died two years ago. Okay. Okay. Could you give a description of your work history? Uh, sure. First, I was a nurse after the reform school. Then I went on to be a childcare worker, and then I opened my own beauty salon. That's why I'm so beautiful now. <laughs> Let's go out here. It's a nice day out. Yeah. So, Judy, what's your biggest weakness? Weakness? I have no weaknesses. Then what are your strengths? Obviously, I'm very successful. So, money. Oh, clearly. How did you get that success? Well, uh, I just work really hard. I can tell, Judy. Yeah. Moving into some more serious questions. Mm -hmm. Prior to the murders, did you say you had a healthy social life? Uh, no. I really had no friends. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just keep... Did you have a husband or kids? Uh, yeah, I did. I had a husband. His name was James. Um, and then I had three children. One before James, which was Michael. And then I had a kid named... James II, after my husband, and Kim. Is that short for anything? Uh, Kimberly, I guess. <laughs> so, assuming that you had your husband and these kids, did you live alone? Uh, well, actually, yeah, I did live alone. My husband was in the army. So, me and my children lived in Orlando. So, no friends? No. No friends. <laughs> That's okay, Judy. 
Do you have a dream country you want to visit? Uh, probably Ukraine. Is I there like a reason? Um, I like the name. Want a drink? Yeah. Sure, I'm so thirsty. Parched, really. All right. Can you explain to us the first time you killed? Well, supposedly it was my husband, James. And they say it was poison with arsenic. Okay, well, who were all of your victims? Supposedly, my victims were James Goodyear, my ex, Bobby Joe Morris, and my son, Michael. Oh, mind if I take this? Oh, not yet. Oh. I'm not done. Oh, okay. So, how did you select these victims, and where and how did it happen? Well, supposedly, I selected them for their money, insurance money. Um, <clears throat> the first two were pretty simple, just poison them with arsenic. But the third was a little more challenging because I poisoned him with arsenic, but then he got a muscle atrophy. I think that's what it's called. This is when the muscles waste away, and it's usually caused by a lack of physical activity, but in this case, it is caused by the poison that Judy gave Michael. And when a disease or injury makes it difficult or impossible for you to move, the lack of mobility can result in the muscle wasting away. So he had prosthetic legs, but shortly after that, I took him on a canoe trip and somehow he got his canoe flipped over and he drowned. Oh, that's, that's really sad. sad. So sorry. What was your motivation? Um, money. <laughs> Money makes the world go round, what can I say? So, how many people would you actually admit to killing? Zero. I'm innocent. Oh. Well, criminal profilers believe that serial killers have a signature at the crime scene. What was yours? Well, I guess you could say poison. That makes sense. Um, mm. what are you doing with the water? Oh! Just adding some ingredients. It makes it taste way better, trust me. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. Just one more thing. Can you describe how you were eventually captured? What specific evidence was used to lead to your arrest? Well, <laughs> funny to ask. Um, <clears throat> first, they grew suspicious of me, the police, of course. They were suspicious because, um, well, my name was tied to both of those killings because, you know, my last name's the same. So then I decided to change my last name to Bueno Año, which is good here in Spanish. <laughs> so creative. Um, then I got a new boyfriend, but he grew suspicious as well. So I tried to bomb his car. He survived. Called the police. Then the police came looking for me at my house. I wasn't there, I was at work, but <clears throat> they found the rope and tape that was there. Oops. Then they came to my work and arrested me on the spot and put me on death row. Oh. Here, this is ready. Want it? Uh, um, sure, Judy. Thanks. Um. <laughs> I have a few more questions that are all kind of tied together. Mm -hmm. Um, so, towards the end of your trial, did you take a plea bargain? Were you sentenced to life in prison or did you receive the death penalty? And then, when are you scheduled to be executed and how? Oh, this, I got on legal documents. Hold on. Oh. What is this? Oh, I don't remember. First, I made bail on the attempted murder charge, but I was indicted for the first degree murder of the death of my son with an additional count of grand theft for the insurance scam. I was sentenced to life and imprisonment without parole for the first 25 years. My trial in, in the James Gentry case, which was my ex-boyfriend that I tried to bomb, opened October 15th and lasted three days. This made my 12 year prison sentence consecutive with my life term for Michael slaying. A year later, on October 22nd, 1985, I went to trial for the murder of my husband, James Goodyear. The trial was a week long and I denied any criminal activity, of course. The jurors did not buy my act. 
How stupid. I was convicted on my second charge of first degree murder and formally sentenced to death on November 16th. Wow, that pretty much sums it up. I yeah. decided not to actually try that, but oh. we're, we're uh, going to be heading out. We're going to go. <laughs> so thank you, Judy, for having us. Oh, uh, are you really guys sure you don't want to stay? I can make more drinks. I mean, I, I don't, I'm not feeling so thirsty anymore. I think we're good to go, All right, actually. well, come back next time. I don't well, think maybe. we Maybe. Then we'll have some drinks. Oh, yes, yeah, so great. Right. Yeah. Bye. Bye.